Welcome back to The Daily Move. Today is week four, day four. Congratulations, guys, on completing the four-week mobility challenge. Before we even get started, make sure to hit that like button and a pat yourself on the back for completing all 16 days. Today, you're not gonna need any equipment. All you're gonna need is some space. So clear some room and let's get started. So we're gonna start here with some gentle neck rolls. So standing up nice and tall. You can move your neck in any way that feels good. So you can tuck that chin down and make circles. You can look over your shoulder from right to left. You can tuck your chin down towards your chest and bring the chin up towards the ceiling. You can even gently use your arms to kind of guide your neck into a stronger stretch. Whatever feels nice on that neck. Next, we're gonna move down into the shoulders with some shoulder rolls. Make sure to go forward and backwards with this motion. And then we're gonna progress into arm circles. Same thing, forward and backwards. So next we're gonna do a bow and arrow here where we're bending one elbow and pulling back as if we're pulling back a bow. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna extend all the way backwards and reach behind us with that straight arm. Continuing that twist. Next, we're gonna take our hands up towards our shoulders and just do a spinal twist here from side to side. Next, we're gonna go into flexion extension, adding in those arms, kind of like a cat-cow. And now we're gonna hula hoop the hips, making giant circles, doing three in one direction and then three in the opposite direction. Next, we're gonna stand tall and do some pelvic tilts, posteriorly and anteriorly. And now what we're gonna do is some knee circles. You wanna do three in one direction, three in the other. And then standing nice and tall, we're gonna put our toes down on the ground and as if we're dragging it forward, we're gonna feel a nice stretch into the front part of our shin. You can play by putting emphasis onto the big toe, the little toes, or into the center, just to see what feels best. Next, we're gonna tuck that chin down, do a full curl down towards the ground. Come back up into that full extension. Let's see that back bend. It's okay to bend the knees with this. And we're gonna go forward and back. Go at your own pace here. If you wanna go slow, go slow. If you wanna speed it up, go ahead. So next what we're gonna do is we're kind of doing a wood chop motion here. It's kind of like you're picking up some water and you're trying to splash it over top of your shoulder. You wanna be pretty loose with this and let those arms just be relaxed. All that force is coming from the legs and just transferring into the hands. You wanna do five to six of those water throws per side. So next we're gonna make big circles with our hips here, bringing the knee up to the chest and opening wide. We wanna do between five to six repetitions per side. All we're doing here is just alternating. Now you can go from your knee up to your chest and out, or you can start going out and then bringing that knee in towards the chest. Your choice on what feels best. Next, what we're gonna do is go really loose and start bouncing with our ankles here and just letting everything else go loose. We're gonna do this for 10 to 15 seconds, letting everything go. And then what we're gonna do is use our legs to start twisting and letting our arms just be limp, going with the motion. So again, you just wanna go completely limp here. 
and let the legs do all the work. So hopefully you're feeling nice and loose, a little bit warmed up here. We're gonna go into a butterfly stretch next. So the bottom of the feet are facing one another and you're pushing the knees down towards the floor. We're gonna hang out here for about five to 10 seconds and then we're gonna scoot our butt away or put, bring our legs out in front, more like a diamond shape, leaning forward. Nice deep breaths here. Going back into that butterfly pose, you're gonna take your opposite hand to your opposite knee, push it down as you create a spinal twist. You're gonna hold for a few seconds before switching sides. Again, going at your own pace here. Once you've done between three and five side, depending on how quickly you're moving, you're gonna go back into that diamond stretch, see if you can go any further into it. Next, we're going to go into a straddle stance where our legs go out to the side. If you find that you're not flexible in this position, propping your butt up onto a block makes it easier. As you breathe in, come out of the stretch, and as you breathe out, fold forward. Now you can kind of play around in this position here. You can go straight down, or you can go from side to side where you just emphasize one leg stretch versus the other. And instead of having your hands run along your legs, you can also have them into the center as well. And if your back is killing you, you can take the opposite hand and reach over top of your head towards the toes to get just a little bit more of a back stretch. So whatever feels good, go ahead and play with that. So next up, we're gonna be kneeling and you're gonna place one hand down onto the ground and then arc the other hand over top of your head, feeling a nice side body stretch here. After a few seconds, what you're gonna do is take that top hand, reach it down in front of your body, and then you're gonna circle around to the opposite side. Really opening that side of the body there, feeling a nice stretch. Now take that top arm, circle it down. We're gonna go to that starting side. And again, circling down and going to the opposite side. So keep holding this stretch. I'm just letting you know what's up next. You're gonna want something for a calf stretch. So you can have a step, you can have a foam pad, you can have a wall, whatever you want to go and stretch out your calf with. So whatever prop you're using, you're stepping on with one foot here, dropping the heel down, tucking the pelvis and leaning forward. Now, because I have a short pad here, I find I get a better stretch if I cross that top, that back leg in front, so the leg that I'm not stretching. And again, you can stretch your calves in a bunch of different ways. You can do it standing, you can do it in a downward dog. You can even have it with two feet and just letting the heels sink. So you find an appropriate way here to allow the calves to start relaxing. Breathing into those tight spots. So next we're gonna have one leg out in front of us with the toes up. We're gonna hip hinge here, leaning down towards the toes, feeling a nice stretch into the hamstring. And we're gonna 
gonna switch sides doing the same thing. Nice deep breath here. Working with your body, not against it. We're never trying to force mobility. Next, we're gonna stand up nice and tall. We're gonna take our one leg and sweep it behind us. The same leg that sweeps behind us, that same arm is gonna reach up towards the ceiling and over. You should feel a nice stretch here into the side of the body, but also a little bit down into your TFL, your tensor fasciae latte. This little muscle here is attached onto that IT band, and if it is really tight, it actually pulls on that band, creating that tightness. You want to do four to five repetitions on one side before switching to the opposite. So next we're going to lay on our stomach and we're going to go into frog position here. So our toes are pointed out and you're slowly sinking the hips back. After 10 seconds, what you're gonna do is straighten out one leg. And you wanna to lean towards the bent leg. You should feel a nice stretch into the adductor. The muscles that are on the inner part of our thigh. Holding here for 10 seconds, and then you're gonna go back into frog here. We're gonna hang out in frog for another 10 seconds before we straighten out the other side. Again, you're leaning your body weight towards the bent knee, having that other leg straight. Holding for another 10 seconds before returning back into frog. Make sure to come out of this position nice and slow once you're done your 10 seconds. And you're going to find yourself onto your back into a happy baby pose where you're grabbing onto the bottom of your feet. We're going to start rolling here soon, but take a few moments into that happy baby. So next we're going to play with this rolling series. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Just play around with it. So you really want to round your back. If you go flat, you, you'll just hit the ground and you won't be able to roll. So you really want to round that spine. When you come out of it, try different positions. Like try your straddle position, try butterfly position, try straight legs where you go and touch your toes. You can try rolling back and when you come up, cross one leg over the other. I find that you really get into the glutes that way. Just make sure to repeat it with the opposite leg crossed. So you are going at your own pace here. If you want, you can do some get up transitions. You can lean forward to stretch out those calves, get the ankles going. You can stand all the way up. You can roll to a jump. You can roll to a push up. You can do whatever you want here. Just be very playful with this position. Find different ways to get up, find different ways to enter into that back roll. Spend some time and plow if you want with your legs over top of your head.
playing with this position. I'm just letting you know what's up next. We're going to go into a scorpion where you're lying on your stomach. So finish up your last roll here and find your way face down. And we're going to do a scorpion up into a cassock squat. So what you're going to do is you're going to kick the ceiling. You're going to create that rotation. Make sure your hands are in a push-up position so you can help push yourself up. And then you want to stand up using that leg. You're going to come back down into that scorpion position, switch over the legs, and stand back up. Again, play around with this position. So finish up your last cassock squat. And you're gonna lay on your back, cross one leg over the other, creating a spinal twist here, looking in the opposite direction that the legs went. You should feel a nice stretch here into the glutes and into the back. You'll find with those scorpion cassock squats that sometimes your heart rate will be up, so this is a good time to start taking some calming breaths. Switching sides. So next we're going to play with our ankles here. So I have one leg crossed over the other. So we're on the knife blades or the outer part of our foot as we squat down. Go down as low as you can control it. If you can get your butt all the way down to the ground, great. And if you can't, that's great too. You're going to do five one way and then you're going to switch your legs and do five with the other leg. If you want to have some fun with this instead of doing five on one leg, five on the other, every time you stand up, you can do a 360 twirl with the legs and you'll just alternate the legs that you're actually squatting with if you want to just have a little bit more fun with that. Next, you're going to have a wide stance. This is called an awkward squat where you squat bringing the knees together and letting those ankles dive in. Again, we're trying to load the ankle here because what we want to do is prepare the ankle in case you ever roll over, it knows what to do and it has the strength and the ability to recover from it. Next, you're going to cross one leg behind and you're on the toes, just like when we were doing that, that shin stretch. And you're going to do three to five squats here where you're bending the knee. Make sure to get the other side. So for this last uh, drill of the day, it's up to you if you want to put on your shoe or not. And we're going to see if we can rotate around keeping the shoe on our foot. Now again, you can try doing this without a shoe on your foot uh, and then progress to this when you think that you're ready. The shoe is a good indicator to say that you're able to keep your foot facing the ceiling the entire time. And this one does take practice. So over these last four weeks, we're really focusing on that hip internal external rotation, which this drill requires a lot of. Now this is actually only half of the drill. You can actually, once you flip onto your stomach, continue going in a circle around 
and uh, if you want to try that out, you can. I hope that you've learned over these four weeks that mobility can actually be a lot of fun. It doesn't necessarily need to be holding long positions or long poses for long periods of time. It's just finding new ways for your body to move. Congratulations guys on finishing the 16 days. You guys are amazing. Hopefully you guys are feeling better for it. Make sure to like and subscribe. And if you know anyone else that would benefit from these videos, please share. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. You guys are awesome.